untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue red control deck featuring Ovika, Enigma, Goliath as our commander. The 7 mana 6 6 flyer has a ward, making the opponent both pay 3 mana and 3 life if they want to target it. And then says whenever we cast a non creature spell, create X 1 1 a red frex and goblin creature tokens, where X is the mana value of that spell, and those tokens also gain haste until end of turn. So Vika rewards us for ramping into it ahead of schedule, and then casting lots of big, expensive non creature spells to make an army of lethal goblin tokens. Now you could potentially play some goblin synergies in the deck as well, but in my experience you don't really need those tribal synergies to take over. Once you play Ovika you're just better off casting big expensive non-creature spells, as opposed to working with a few anthem effects to pump up your goblin tokens. Still have those built into the deck, but just don't need the goblin lords to make that happen. So let's take a look at the entire deck, which I've split up into a few different categories. As always, start with our ramp, and when trying to cast a 7 mana commander, we do need quite a bit of ramp. The good news is that our ramp cards still generate goblin tokens once we have Ovika in play, so we're not actually too sad casting them late game. So we've got at 2 mana Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mind Stone. And 3, an advantage of blue is that it gets to play with Midnight Clock to potentially refresh its hand. Then Heraldic Banner is one of my favorite cards in the deck, as it can name red to pump up all the goblin tokens we generate with Ovika, in addition to helping us ramp. There's Mana Geo to scry, Talisman to gain some life in addition to making mana, Replicating Ring can maybe eventually make those replicated Ring tokens to make a bunch of extra mana as well. Celestus, always good when we have a bunch of instants in the deck, makes it easier to pass a turn and let it switch to nighttime to give us some card selection. Then at 4 mana there's Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive and Keytooth Archive, all making 2 mana. Then uh, Solemn is not a non-creature spell, so it doesn't trigger a Vika, but still a great card to run out and help you get an extra land, draws a card when it dies. Then at 5 mana Gilded Lotus immediately taps for 3 mana, and then at 6 mana there's the Dreamstone Hedron, which also taps for 3, can also be sacrificed to draw a few cards. And then the Astral Cornucopia we can play for x equals 1 as a 3 mana ramp artifact, but it also scales nicely into the late game, so if we have a ton of mana available we can just sink all our mana into casting a big Cornucopia, which will also make a ton of goblin tokens with Ovika. Next up we've got our spot removal category, including Fiery Impulse, Frostbite, Lightning Bolt and Strangle as 1 mana removal spells that can all potentially deal 3 damage. We've got a Braid which can also hit artifacts, Fire Prophecy can put a card from our hand on the bottom, Lightning Strike can target anything, then Obliterating Bolt deals 4 damage at sorcery speed, Bone Crusher gives us a 2 mana removal spell in addition to a 4-3 creature, and Prismari Command similar to Braid can deal damage to creatures but also hit artifacts at the same time, can also maybe make a treasure to help us ramp or draw and discard. Then we've got quite a few sweepers as well in this deck, since we're trying to control the board. We have very few creatures that we're going to play early ourselves, so we don't mind having a few ways to wipe the board and make sure we don't fall too far behind. So there's Anger of the Gods to deal three and exile creatures in the process, so that avoids any death triggers from going off. Then there's Brotherhood's End, can deal three to creatures and planeswalkers, and can also maybe deal with artifacts. Sweltering Suns can be cycled if we don't need it. Storm's Wrath deals four to creatures and planeswalkers. And then at five mana we both have Burn Down the House and Hour of Devastation to deal five to creatures and planeswalkers. Then we've got a few card draw spells as well, including ways to make treasure, including seize the spoils, we'll discard and draw two in addition to making a treasure. And then at four mana we've got Big Score, Pirate Spillage, and Unexpected Windfall, which will discard to draw two and make two treasures, so that can potentially set up Ovika on the following turn. Then Memory Deluge we can cast for four mana and flash it back, which is another great way to make more goblins with Ovika and draw a few cards in the process. Bank Buster and Treasure Map are cheaper artifacts we can play out and then slowly draw additional cards with it or scry in the case of Treasure Map until we transform it into Treasure Cove, at which point it also makes additional treasures, which can give us a small mana boost, and then we can always sacrifice treasures to the cove, which which also synergizes with the other cards that generate treasure tokens. Then a Galvanic Iteration can potentially copy some of our powerful spells, can also flash it back. And then Expressive Iteration, just a nice cantrip early on. Usually want to wait until turn 3 to cast it so we can exile a land and then still put a card in hand as well. And then we've got a few counter spells with Wash Away, perfect for countering opposing commanders for 1 mana, Negate, as well as Counterspell. 
Then Mind Splice Apparatus also has great synergy in a deck trying to cast some expensive instants and sorceries as we can discount them. Then Mystic's Mastery can be quite fun as well as we can maybe set it up early by discarding an expensive spell to one of our discard outlets and then we'll be able to cast it out of the graveyard on the following turn. And we can also overload it for 8 mana which is quite realistic thanks to all the ramp. And then we get to exile all instants and sorceries out of our graveyard and copy them and then cast them for free. And then a time warp to take an extra turn is also very powerful with our commander especially as we get to make goblin tokens that can attack over the course of two turns and then we can pull ahead in the meantime. And then we've got the final category which are just uh, expensive non-creature spells to hopefully ramp into and those include Alchemist Gambit which we're planning to cleave for 7 mana to take an extra turn, Reverse Rebuke as a one-sided bounce effect bouncing all the opponent's stuff back, Immortal Sun can pump up our goblin tokens and give all our spells a 1 mana discount, Elrond's Epiphany will need to be foretold first to take an extra turn and to generate bird tokens but we can always cast it as a 7 mana time walk. Seagate Restoration can be played as a land or as a 7 mana draw spell. We've got Magma Opus can also be discarded early to make a treasure token. And then at 8 mana an instant that can deal 4 damage to different targets. Can make a 4-4 token, tap stuff down and draw 2 cards. So very powerful as well. Then we get to some of the X spells to top off our curve. Blue Sun's Twilight can steal opposing creatures, maybe copy them in the process. Finally to draw a bunch of cards, maybe untap our lands if we cast it for X equals 10 or more. Crackle with Power can be a great finisher, dealing a ton of damage to different targets if we have the mana for it. Shadow Skull Smashing, similar to Seagate Restoration, can be a land or an X spell, in this case dealing damage to creatures and planeswalkers. And Expansion Explosion is also quite versatile. Expansion can maybe copy a cheaper instant or sorcery, and then Explosion can deal damage while drawing a bunch of cards at the same time. And then our mana base has a few utility lands, including the various castles, the blue one to scry, the red one can pump up our goblin tokens, so that's also quite nice. Got the channel lands, Soaring City to bounce, and then we've got the Crucible to make 1-1 tokens. We've got Den of the Bugbear, as well as Hall of the Storm Giants as creature lands. And then just a ton of snow-covered basics to enable our Frostbite to deal 3 damage. And then quite a few blue-red dual lands as well for additional mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play up against Yarok, so Sultai entered the battlefield deck. Our hand's not bad. A lot of ramp into Ovika, hopefully pick up some uh, card draw or some big finisher. At least Ovika still triggers off all non-creature spells, including some of our artifacts. So for now, probably want to get Midnight Clock going first. Now if our opponent presents a target for Strangle, I may still go Banner on red since that pumps our goblins and then we can still strangle and Cobra is certainly a valid target. So we'll have to wait on our Midnight Clock. But now I can just go for Archive or Vessel. Vessel makes more sense since it enters tapped unless we pick up something I can cast right away with Archive. And then I prefer ramping for two as opposed to ramping for one with Solemn. And then if we get to untap here, we'll have 6 mana at the very least. So with the land I could already cast Ovika. Negate's not bad either. So let's start with Archive. And then I could still play Solemn afterwards. Keep the Midnight Clock which actually makes goblins with Ovika. Can find another mountain. So yeah, we're off to an excellent start. No complaints here. Opponent hasn't done much besides play a Cobra. Although we don't have a clean solution to a Yarok either. Brother sends only 3 damage unless they block Solemn. We won't be able to finish it off. So there it is. Yeah, let's just attack with Solemn, see if they block. And then I can play Ovika, keep up Negates. Which we'll have to do for now. Hope they don't have something like a Chupacabra or some other removal effect that dodges negate. Temporal Sundering is certainly worth countering here. Make a couple of goblins. So that went well for us. And now we can untap, cast a bunch of spells. Opponents attacking with Yarok, so they're giving me the opportunity to trade. I think I actually take it now, since we can attack back for quite a lot of damage, especially now with Immortal Sun. 
So let's see, if we play Dreamstone first, we can tap it for three, and that leaves just enough to still play Mortal Sun, pump the team, and make six more goblins. Wow. So that should be enough for lethal here. Yeah, this game could not have gone much better for us. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Up against a Judith deck can be quite aggressive. So important that we have a lot of cheap interaction, and this hand does exactly that. So we'll keep. And then... Might end up playing a tapped restoration. Could keep up turn one frostbite. Yeah, maybe I'll wait on restoration for a little bit in case we draw a bunch of ramp. I might need this as my curve topper. Okay, Darograph Ghoul. Happy to frostbite. Now we've got Lightning Strike available. And then next turn I might play a tapped restoration. Especially now that we picked up another expensive sweeper. Dreadwander. That one can easily come back, so I'm less interested in killing it, although Cold Conscript as well. So yeah, plenty of recursive threats. I think we still hang on to Lightning Strike. Now I could keep up both Impulse and Lightning Strike. And then play Tapped Restoration next turn, I guess. We'll see if they play Judith. They do. So we can Impulse Judith. And then the question is, do we kill another creature here, or just take four? I think if our plan is to burn down the house on five, it's reasonable to just uh, take a bit of a hit here, hang on to the lightning strike for later. Castle is untapped, so next turn I'll be able to burn down the house. Could also opt to make 1-1 one, one Devil Tokens, which line up well against uh, one Toughness Creatures. For now we'll take 4. Opponent does have a Castle in their mana base, so that could be a problem in the late game. For now an Obnixilus with Casualty. Okay, at least Burn Down the House now can deal damage to Planeswalkers as well to clean up Obnixilus. Could have also potentially used a Lightning Strike here. Let's see. Yeah, this one goes up to 4 loyalty, so never mind. If they had activated the Author of Nixilus first, I would have gotten the chance to a Lightning Strike, the uh, legendary version. But I think now Burnout House is just going to be a cleaner solution. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. Okay, so that will reset the board and leave us with a replicating ring to a ramp towards Avika. Rebuke not at its best when it's just bouncing a bunch of one mana creatures. Opponent shocks us down to 10. And a Kari's F, I'm happy to lightning strike. And a headliner as well. Okay, opponent's gonna have to discard to keep that one around. If I play Ring and I draw land, I can still play Ovika next turn. Windfall probably gives me a better shot. And then I can always use a Treasure to Lightning Strike if needed. So it's also possible we just discard the Ring and hang on to Rebuke. Although Rebuke bouncing a Haste creature is also not the best. Yeah, still will keep Rebuke, I think. Did not hit a land, but did hit an Anger of the Gods. Anger would be a nice solution to the various recursive threats, so I think we still Lightning Strike Karizef. And then Anger could also prevent the damage from Judith, since we Exile instead of Destroy. So I want to Lightning Strike now to make it harder for them to get back Conscript. Although honestly, maybe we actually wanted them to get back Conscript to set up our Anger. So with a land they could replay Judith. It's going to be Blood Artist, another card that uh, doesn't trigger off Anger of the Gods. So yeah, plan is simple, Banner into Anger. This name's red. And then we're still at four, so don't love my spots necessarily. Bone can replay Judith. We can play Ovika. 
or the opponent can return Dread Wanderer. Okay, so play Ovika. If they play Judith next turn, attack with Wanderer. I can just block it. And that works out fine. And then we can try and pull ahead with our commander here. Gonna have to close out the game quickly, because uh, we don't want to give the opponent time to draw into another burn spell or eventually kill us with Judith triggers. So yeah, close game. River's Rebuke makes six goblins. And they get pumped by Banner. Scorpion is another scary one. Opponent draws with Castle. Wash away potential one mana counter to Judith. So we have to be very careful here. If I played Dreamstone, I wouldn't be able to play anything afterwards. So it might just be Rebuke, bounce the opponent's stuff back, hit them for a bunch, and then try and close out the game next turn. Opponent's at three. Could have considered leaving one token back in case of a haste creature, but we know most of their hand. Yeah, Banner proving to be quite useful here alongside our Ovika pumping our goblins, making mana to cast Ovika in the first place. So definitely a must-have in the deck. Ooh, Colgan's Command. Destroying an artifact, dealing two. Okay, are we dead here? Just a scorpion. And a Dread Wanderer. Alright, so should still be able to attack for lethal here. GG's. Can just attack all out. Even if we dealt two damage to the Scorpion, we would still deal lethal before taking two from the Scorpion, so that would have worked out fine. And also had a castle to activate, could have played more spells beforehand, but no need. Just attack for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against Azuri, a blue-green proliferate deck. Our hands, okay. Uh, Storm's Wrath could come in handy. Couple of ramp cards. Not the best ramp cards necessarily, they only ramp for one. Start with a Talisman, and then there's a chance we can play Cornucopia for X equals 2. Signet was a nice pickup, can play that next turn, and then just ramp straight into a Solemn. Turn to Thrumming Bird, that is a pretty scary card to face. So, gonna be interested in casting a Storm's Wrath pretty soon here. Nothing to proliferate on just yet. Three mana for a Tesseract's Gambit to draw to. That's okay. And we'll just play a Solemn and get a Mountain. And then next turn we can maybe play two of our three drops in the same turn. And then we're setting up for Ovika to make an appearance. Although I imagine we'll still Storm's Wrath before Ovika. Storm's Wrath would also kill the 1-1 Goblin, so not the most synergistic there. Alright, there's Azuri, so now opponent can draw off Thrumming Bird. So I'm more interested in clearing the board with a Storm's Wrath. Would set the opponent back quite a bit. And then we can still play a Mana Geode beforehand. And uh, yeah, might as well attack with a Solemn, opponent's likely to take it. Brotherhood's ends. Could also clear the board here. Do we keep another sweeper? Even though it can damage planeswalkers, I may want to look for a bit of card draw or some other top end card. So we'll hit for two. And Storm's Wrath. Don't want Azuri and Thrumming Bird to get out of hand. And then next turn we could already play Ovika. And uh, nice, see, so get restoration. Is exactly what I was looking for. If we suspect a counter spell, I can just wait on casting Ovika, set up a large cornucopia. Okay, it's gonna be a Teferi. Would have been nice to hit with a Storm's Wrath. Well, there's another answer potentially. Although I think we can wait on Hour of Devastation. Doesn't kill our own Ovika. So we might be able to kind of pull ahead with it now. So play Ovika, just play Soaring City, and then next turn I might cast an Hour of Devastation, we'll see.
Could just attack the ferry. If given the chance. Is it possible I can wait on Hour of Devastation, just cast a Seagate Restoration instead? The ferry makes another token. And Master of Time. Okay. That could phase out Ovika before we get to make any goblins with it. Although it'll have to do it right away, essentially, because as soon as we cast the spell we get the token, so then phasing out our response doesn't help. Although now our Hour of Devastation is looking a lot more appealing. The fairy can draw again in our turn, growing this up to a 5-5. So we're running out of time to answer the token. Okay, so all in favor of our devastation? Yeah, I think so. Do we want to play one of our ramp artifacts first? Probably better to play it afterwards to actually keep those tokens. Could also keep some cards in hand to set up a bigger Seagate Restoration, which I'm also in favor of. Okay, the ferry draws on the way out. And then everything dies. Attack for six, and yeah, opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing two heavens as one, so Mardu aggro. So we're gonna need some cheap removal. Bolt definitely counts, although the rest of my hand is pretty awkward with no blue mana, no third land. I'm gonna have to take a mulligan. This isn't great, but uh, can maybe wash away their commander. And then hope to find some cheap removal that I can maybe copy with iteration. Could also hang on to our Shatter Skull Smashing. Could see taking another mulligan here. Alright, this is a little bit better. So I can keep Mindstone ramp into a big score, which sets up a rebuke. So I might have to get rid of Banner. And then Negate I might have to discard to a big score, since I don't expect him to have a ton of non-creature spells. Lizard Blades. Let us hang on to Crucible just in case. I'm probably gonna take two anyways. And then Big Score. Possibly discarding Negate. Okay, Fable. Somewhat tempting to counter here. But bouncing it with Rebuke is also fine. Yeah, they can have it. And then I might want to set up Ovika before we actually Rebuke. Okay. So we can play Ovika here. Hope they can't remove it. And then Rebuke is going to be quite effective next turn, making six goblin tokens. But if they have a cheap removal spell, we could be in trouble. They're looking menacingly at Ovika. Sword to Plashers would be painful. But I'm discarding Cloud Steel and Archon. It's early enough in the game where they may not be able to pay the Ward 3 cost. But with a treasure from the Shaman, even a 2-mana removal spell at instant speed could work. Okay, we know it out. The opponent can go digging for some humans. Let's see what they find. Found a Thalia. Does actually prevent us from casting a Rivers Rebuke here, which is pretty funny, but can uh, take out the Shaman at least. I think that's fine here. And then we'll still have a Lightning Strike available. Could Talisman and then still Lightning Strike for 3 mana. And make a bunch of Goblins. Could attack with the Goblins. Since we can Lightning Strike to finish off Winota. And then I'll keep Ovika back on defense for now, I think. Okay. Minota down. And then next turn Rebuke presents 
16 damage, so not quite lethal, but we're getting close. Two heavens doesn't double any abilities, at least not yet. Blade Reforged, that'll be attacking into our 6-6. Six -six. And we can send everything packing. And now I'll smash with everyone. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tyvar, so presumably an elf deck. And our hand's not bad. Burn down the house as our sweeper could clean up a bunch of elves. And then, as long as we hit our third land, we can banner and talisman to ramp into it. Okay. So, no shortage of uh, three mana ramp artifacts, just needs a third land. Next turn we can potentially wash away Tyvar as well. For now a visionary, that's fine. Yeah, we could be in a bit of trouble if we fail to draw land next turn. We'll take one. And counter Tyvar. At least that bought us a bit of time. Luckily found a land, and then now Banner vs Ring. Let's go with the Ring first, get those counters going. They might also have a way to destroy it, in which case I prefer Banner. Talisman also an option to start gaining a bit of life. But getting the extra mana turn sooner probably makes a bigger difference. So now we could Deluge to hit our land drops. Okay, Tribe is pretty scary too, makes 3 mana next turn. Did not draw land. So, could hang on to both Deluge and Negates. Or I could Deluge main phase to hit my land drop for the turn. And hope the opponent doesn't resolve anything too scary. Most of the cards our opponent would be playing are probably creatures anyway. So I think it's fine to Deluge. And then just grab 2 lands. Okay, so next turn we could burn down the house if necessary. It's gonna be a frail lease. Another planeswalker we can potentially answer with our sweeper. Could untap the tribe, so it paid for itself. And there's Tyvar, which can also untap the tribe. So our opponent still has six mana. And a Shepherd. And a Herald. So Burn Out the House is going to be pretty brutal. And that's all I can do this turn. Clean up everything. So long as evil lives. So Next turn we can play Ovika, and then maybe flashback a Deluge. Or play Banner and uh, pump up our goblins that way. Thoughtseize is a turn late. Don't really care what they take. Takes a Bone Crusher. I think Banner was probably my favorite card. And Bone Crusher not even capable of killing the 4 3 Provisioner here. Okay, time for a Vika. Opponent's got one card left. Could be a removal spell. Could have waited to play Ovika with Negate Backup. But then I would have cast most of my non-creature spells. So then we wouldn't get as many goblins. I guess with a deluge in the graveyard that would be reasonable. But now at least Ovika can pressure Tyvar. Which could get back also a shepherd or visionary to draw right away. Okay, so once we get to untap we're in great shape. And yeah, opponent sees a writing on the wall. They know what we have in hand. They don't know about Terrivers Rebuke yet, but even without it we're still in great shape as we can take out Tyvar, Deluge, can uh, make a bunch of goblins and find plenty more answers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nyssa of Shadowed Bows, so a black-green landfall deck. My hand is okay, not amazing. Sweltering Suns, unlike the more recent sweepers, does not deal damage to Planeswalkers, neither does Fire Prophecy. So I might actually have to take a mulligan. 
Okay, at least we've got a Storm's Wrath now. Mind Splice Apparatus could come in handy. Can maybe set up an Alchemist Gambit to take an extra turn. So we'll give it a shot. Turn on Ladder Elves, always scary. Okay, do we play a Tapped Smashing? Guess we can start with Fabled Passage, grabbing a Mountain. And then, next turn, decide whether to play Smashing based on whether we draw land or not. Turn to Cultivate, so... Yeah, great start for the Black-Green deck. Hopefully we can still catch up. Did draw land, so now I'm inclined to hang on to the Smashing. And then... Yeah, still don't have anything great planned for next turn. Could maybe smash and killing an elf. As our opponent keeps ramping. Hoping to pick up some other proactive play. And then it's turn four apparatus. Take it from there. So, could kill the elf. I think at this point just play tapped hall and hope whatever they play... It's not going to kill me on the spot. And then hopefully Storm's Wrath can catch us back up. Opponent can finally play Nissa, Play a land up to 5 loyalty. And then still maybe plus. In which case Storm's Wrath is not enough. Opponent just keeps on ramping with a regrowth. So they must not have a land in hand, otherwise they might have gone Nissa into regrowth. A Liliana to start making his discard. Well, now Storm's Wrath lines up pretty well. So, what should I get rid of? I like all my cards. Could be Islands, since we still have Smashing as a land potentially if necessary. And then I should Storm's Wrath while we still kill Liliana with it. Okay, opponent still has six mana in play. But now we could get our apparatus down, which will then enable the rest of our hand. And if we take a bit of damage, that's not too bad. Immortal Sun, perfect answer to here. We'll still be able to play it next turn. So, yeah, could go tapped smashing. Now that we have a different answer to Planeswalkers and save myself the 3 damage. And then we can Apparatus end of turn, untap Immortal Sun, and then wait on Gambit until after Immortal Sun's down, maybe even after Ovika is in play, although they might have some removal for our commander here. Okay, Nissa's gonna minus 5, that's scary. Gets back. The Boundless Sky, which they must have discarded earlier with Liliana. Fair enough. So, play Apparatus. And then I'm still down to play Mortal Sun. And then next turn, we'll see what's next. Hopefully they don't have a way to remove my artifacts. If they do, at least we'll still have an Apparatus. Take six. So next turn we'll get a 3 mana discount between both artifacts, so Pillage actually generates one more mana. Oh, this is a Casualties of War, isn't it? Ouch. Immortal Sun down, they can still activate Nissa, And they also destroy the land in the process. Yeah, that's a setback. Sweltering Suns does not damage Planeswalkers. So Pillage discards Sweltering Suns. Since I can't play Ovika here, I could still Gambit take an extra turn, but it doesn't really accomplish a whole lot, so I think we're better off waiting. Well, that's a lot of land. So, yeah, I'm just gonna pass it back. Still not gonna have enough mana to play Ovika and cleave Gambit next turn. So I'm not sure what our plan is. Titan of Industry blows up our apparatus as well. Too bad they had two different answers to artifacts. 
Otherwise, you can imagine how we can pull ahead with uh, all the mana discounts, taking an extra turn, drawing multiple cards in the process. Counter spells a bit late to the party. Yeah, my only option is to gambit with Cleave, take an extra turn, and then we're still probably dead. Archive. So if I play Ovika, I do keep up counter spell, but yeah, we're gonna have to chum block, so. That should still be game over. Alright, GG's. Some timely answers from our opponents. Even if they somehow put a spell on the stack here to let me counter spell, this still tramples, this flies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, so they can play either side. So, blue red spells deck. Our hand is not ideal for the matchup. Prismari Command can maybe blow up an opposing ramp artifact, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, I think we need something a little bit different. This seems better. Turn to Signet, couple other ramp artifacts, and then Deluge could be great as an instant speed card draw spell. Lotus is always exciting. So yeah, our main concern is opposing counter spells. Baral points towards a lot of those in the opponent's deck. But uh, at least we can get a Celestus down, which can at least let us draw and discard if the opponent keeps up mana instead of playing something main phase. And then ideally I can play Lotus next turn if our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana. Maybe better to go for Deluge. Okay, Mana Geo would likely to be discarded here. Although, could also just discard a land. If I Mana Geode, I guess I can still Deluge. And if they counter Geode, I'm pretty happy. Alright, fine, we'll discard Steam Vents, play Geode. And then uh, see if that resolves. It does. Get to Scry, Mind Stone doesn't seem needed. And then end of turn we can Deluge so we don't run into a Counterspell. Could still Deluge now if I wanted to, since that means switching it to Daytime, but our opponent does still potentially have a Counterspell available. Alright, let's Deluge now. If they counter, we can maybe resolve a Lotus. Memory Lapse for one mana. Puts it back. Okay. So... Could uh, Lotus and then still Deluge if it resolves. Ovika unlikely to work out. Could attack with Den, but if we run into a cheap removal spell that's pretty bad. So, yeah, we'll give Lotus a try. Don't expect it to resolve. But at least by getting those counter spells out of the way, we're more likely to resolve Ovika, which can win the game quite quickly. Opponent finally taps out since they're maybe out of answers. It's gonna be Will to draw to. Okay, so we could attack then at uh, will and then still Deluge. Maybe better than resolving Ovika in case our opponent has a removal spell that answers it. So if the plan is to then attack will, I may as well Deluge first in case it changes my plan. Okay, Storm's Wrath would also deal with Baral. Solomon and Crackle, probably the pick. And then we'll just animate Dan to take out Will. Thank you. Okay, opponent does have more cards in hand, but we have a bit more mana to work with. Shark Typhoon Hardcast. Okay, opponent means business. So, try to resolve Ovika. And then we can still Cold Steel Heart to make a few goblins. And then Ovika can block some sharks as well. 
and this can name red. No attacks for now. So now my main concern is something like a river's rebuke bouncing everything. Creative Outburst makes a 7-7 seven, seven shark. Can still potentially take it out with Crackle. So I could Crackle for X equals 3 here, but I think I'd just do it for 2 to potentially pay for a conditional counterspell, since they still get the discount from Baral. Alright, let's cross our fingers. Either way, we get to make a bunch of goblins. Alright, let's turn the team sideways and hope for the best. And brainstorm in response makes a 1-1 shark to chump Ovika, so that might keep them alive. Alright, points are two life, but they could still easily take over from here. So, let's hope for the best. Windfall to kick things off. Thirst, that's fine. So they're just making a couple sharks, but if they don't find a sweeper to deal with the goblins, we're still going to be able to go wide enough. Consider makes a 1-1. One, one. And next turn I can flashback Deluge at the very least to make... Seven goblins. They can target Ovika since they're at two and our opponent explodes. Awesome, so I managed to win the blue-red mirror match. So yeah, we got a nice set of games in with our commander here. And overall, I'm quite impressed by the deck. Just get to play a control role until you're ready to slam down Ovika. And then it doesn't take very long for Ovika to take over the game completely by making an army of hasty goblins. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.